This is my CZ. This thing's been with me for a long time, has thousands of rounds through it, and actually has a couple of wins under its belt. Now club at Monado recently joined up with NRL 22, and it got me thinking. We get asked a lot about how to get started in PRS type shooting, and Rimfire is a really good place to start. And with the IPRF World Championships just being confirmed for late August in 2023, things are getting pretty exciting. Now many of you guys have been watching for a little while know that I upgraded my CZ to this Pagara. And I wanna go through a few of the reasons as to why, and also perhaps why you don't need to, especially if you're getting started. Now one of the obvious changes with this one here is that this is a rifle that's set up in a chassis as opposed to the factory stock that comes with that. This one is the KRG chassis, the Whiskey 3, much like my other guns and we run the same chassis. Now that's a real advantage because I get used to one chassis across multiple guns and you get really familiar with how it's set up for you and how it feels. This Begara has a Remington 700 footprint and that allows us to use a number of different chassis and other options like that. Chassis or even upgraded stocks can be a real benefit with adjustment back here to be able to fit the gun perfectly for you. You've got options to be able to run rails and all sorts of bits and pieces on them as well. But this one here was a really comfortable gun to shoot. I did build up the pad back here uh, with a cheek riser and some stubby holders under, uh, underneath it to give it some depth. That was able to be customized really comfortably. The chassis itself was quite comfortable. The gun is relatively light and nice and easy to use. And in all honesty, shot really well. Being able to go to something that you're used to as a chassis, being able to add all these extras on is nice, but it's certainly not essential. Shouldn't stop you from getting started with what you have. Now, another thing you'll notice is that this barrel is much thicker than the sporter barrel here on the CZ. And in Centerfire, that makes a big difference. It's less of a concern for 22s from running lots of rounds through it. These things don't heat up quite so much. There is a difference, but it's not as noticeable here as it would be in Centerfire. We do get some benefit. It does bring the weight of the gun up, which can be useful. It also can be a real drawback. And if you've been watching long enough, you know I have shoulder issues and often won't shoot uh, if um, unsupported. It's worse with this gun than it is with this gun. But the balance of this rifle with the heavier barrel and the, the larger sh the chassis balances better than this rifle here for me. Balance is important, really important when you're setting your gun up, but it's not so important to stop you from getting started with what you have. The triggers on these are quite different. This one here is uh, the same trigger that I run in six of my other rifles and really used to that trigger. They're all set to the same way, really, really comfortable running that trigger. This one here is the factory trigger. It has been a little bit tweaked to make it a little bit nicer to shoot. But again, if you're not used to this sort of trigger, this one here can actually help you with really good trigger discipline. You need to be able to have good trigger discipline to run this well. It's a really good thing to practice. It's a skill that will stick with you for a long time and always worth investing time into trigger discipline. Magazines, I've forgotten my magazines. Let me go get them. Found my magazines. Now you'll see here that these are quite different size magazines. They both surprisingly hold 10 rounds of 22 LR ammo. This one for the CZ, this one for the Bigara. So why on earth would you want the larger magazine? Because this one is small, lightweight, fits everywhere, and it makes a lot of sense. Well, a couple of reasons. This mimics the size of your Centerfire magazine. If you're running AI, or AI style mags, or anything on those lines, uh, this is the sort of style of thing you're gonna be used to. So you are used to putting it into your magazine pouch, grabbing them out, and putting them into the rifle. That's gonna become Second nature, you practice one skill, works across multiple rifles. That's really useful. You also notice that the same pouch that works for the Centerfire works for the 22, although perhaps I won't push it down quite so far. Grabbing it out is nice and easy, very familiar with that muscle memory that you build up, works well. Tell me if you can spot the problem. Josh, you spot the problem? It's gone. <laughs> it's, Magic. it's gone. There are ways around it, of course. You can see the Velcro that I had here. I used to have Velcro on my magazines and I would sit them in line like that so I had magazines ready to roll. There are magazine holders from SAP that sit in there. There are replacement bottoms so you can end up with two magazines on the same floor plate that you can pull out and move across and where you go. You can get double-ended magazines that you fill in from both sides. There's options. They still feed, they still put 10 rounds into the, the gun, they work fine. I find them a little bit harder to line up. Oh, actually, <laughs> no, I, I've done that a lot of times, but that can be a little trickier to line up into the mag well than these ones here, which sort of 
now I've taken longer on that one there. I'm not used to putting them in from this side, but you get you get the point that the, the larger ones here in the mag well will generally slide in a little bit more comfortable, more regular than these ones here, particularly if you're not familiar with them. Having said that, it's not gonna stop you from shooting your match. And if it's this type of thing here, or a, or a ticker, or a Savage, or any other sort of gun that you have with a magazine like that, it's no problem. It's not gonna stop you from getting started. Now another thing on these rifles is the mounting options here. Many rimfires will come with a 3 dovetail. It's pretty common, uh, pretty standard. I would suggest changing that over to a Picatinny. You can get a Picatinny rail that'll mount on there and that gives you lots and lots of mounting options. Not as strong as a, as a mount like this one here where you tapped and drilled into the action, but in all seriousness on a 22, it is uh, not that big a deal. We're not dealing with that sort of levels of recoil that that's gonna really, with good quality equipment, cause you any problems. The other big differences here is how you mount your bipod. So you see here, I ran the Harris bipod, traditional looking bipod, it's been around for a long time. This one's got the spiky feet on it, but you uh, you mount this one up to the sling stud. Most of these type of rifles are gonna have a sling stud on them. You can pull that off there and away you go. It's a nice easy mount. Now there's a, there's a bunch of drawbacks of using one of these, but they are gonna get you steady. They are gonna allow you to hit targets and they will work. You can fold them up out the way nice and quickly, get them into position and they work great. You can put an Arca rail on that. You can put a Picatinny rail on that. You've got options to change that, but how they come is with that sling stud generally, nice and easy to use. You can get a relatively cheap bipod, get out there and start shooting. Now with something nicer, if you are looking, I would suggest this day and age to grab something with Arca. This one has one built in. You can get ones that you mount on there and that allows you to move your bipod wherever you need it. Also allows you to easily mount into a tripod. The other little benefit of a chassis like this is a nice flat bottom chassis and so you get a really good sort of grip if you are shooting over a bench like that and you're not allowed to use a bag or anything on those lines. But that's rare. Normally you can use a bag of some sort or a bipod. Rare would you not be able to use either. And this will be perfect sitting on a bag on a bench if that's what you are required by the stage to shoot. Both work really well. Now something I mentioned before was about building up the, the cheek piece on this. This one here has an adjustable cheek piece where you can undo it and then move it and then you lend someone your gun and they'll adjust it and you come back to it and won't be able to see through the scope. This all, this all happens, this is a common thing. The joy with something like this is you can build up that cheek rest to wherever you need it to look through your scope perfectly, put some stuff, some stuff under that cheek mount or whatever you use and it's set to that height and I did that for a long time and Josh didn't like it, which was great. Yes, Tony? I just want to grab something out of stock in here. Go, go for it. Tony, Tony, what type of 22 do you use for your type of uh, precision rifle shooting? Come in the light a little bit more. CZ455 in a uh, MDT chassis. Works brilliant. Yeah. Won many comps at my club on it. Yeah. Brilliant. Excellent. Now the one thing we haven't mentioned is optics. Now we've done videos on optics and, and optics have probably play more of a role than either of these guns in a PRS or an NRL type match. And they are such a, a big factor. So that's, if you were going to do some sort of upgrade, optics is probably where you want to put it. Having said that, having said that, where's the scope that was on this gun? <laughs> it was, there it is. This is the scope that now lives on this CZ. This is a little two to seven. And in all honesty, you go out and you can shoot, you will hit targets, and you will enjoy yourself. That is a great place to start because you're out there, you're enjoying it. PRS is so much about the people in the community. Get out there and enjoy, meet people, and you will get better. Speaking of which, Josh has just gone through the process to get his gun license. And I know he was eyeing off a whole stack of things. But Josh, up until the point that you can actually uh, go and buy whatever it is, this is yours to use. We'll get it put into your name and uh, you can go and play with that as much as you, uh, as much as you wish. And then uh, you know, eventually I'm sure you upgrade, but spend some time with this, build those skills. And uh, this gun will still out here, Josh. Not saying Josh is a bad shot, saying that these sort of guns will actually perform very well for a very long time. That gun will definitely actually <laughs> There is more information coming about the World Championships and how to qualify for that sort of gear. Um, stay tuned to IPRF and the Australian sort of chapter of that. Uh, look out for it soon. And if you've got a club that is looking at NRL 22, I highly suggest jumping on board. It's a, a good initiative to get involved with and bring a stack of new shooters into the sport. Get into it, use what you got, 
go and have some fun. Of course, you can put an ARCA rail on that. You can put a ticket. Put, that's not how you say put, pick a tinny. Put a ticky. Yeah, these words are not working well. <laughs>